Hello, my name is Elliot Gu. I'm the editor of uh, Personal Finance, uh, as well as the Energy Strategist and co-editor of MLP Profits, which is a newsletter focused on master limited partnerships. Today I want to talk about uh, a couple of different themes uh, for each of these newsletters. Um, first up, let's talk a little bit about the uh, MLP sector. Uh, one of the biggest uh, developments uh, for master limited partnerships so far this year uh, has been a normalization of credit markets. And what I mean by that is uh, towards the end of 2008, uh, what we saw was a total freeze up of global credit markets. Even companies with uh, AAA uh, or investment grade ratings could not go to the market and sell bonds or take on new loans from banks uh, at anything close to a reasonable interest rate. Uh, even if they could, it would be at such a high interest rate uh, that very few projects that they could possibly undertake would be uh, economic. Um, and that's been a really particularly a big problem or was a particularly big problem for the master limited partnership sector. Uh, primarily because these companies traditionally build uh, very expensive, uh, long-lived assets such as pipelines, um, natural gas storage facilities. Uh, these are very stable assets in the sense that um, most of the, uh, the revenues from those assets are fee-based. In other words, if you own a pipeline, uh, your fees for uh, running that pipeline are not based on the value of oil or natural gas that runs through the pipe, but rather the uh, volume of natural gas or oil uh, that runs through the pipeline. Uh, in addition, traditionally, the pipelines have a minimum charge uh, that is charged to the users of that pipeline simply for the right to have capacity on the pipeline. Uh, so in many cases, three quarters or more of the cash flow of the pipeline uh, is paid regardless of how much of the pipeline is actually used. Uh, so very stable assets and very much in high demand, uh, mainly in the U.S. because of all these new uh, shale natural gas plays we have around the country. Um, and these are very prolific plays where there's a lot of new gas coming on stream. Uh, unfortunately, in some of these places, there just aren't enough pipelines out there uh, to carry all that natural gas uh, from those producing bases to market. Uh, but at the end of last year, companies, even with very attractive projects underway, had a hard time uh, raising capital uh, either by lending uh, from banks or via issues of new bonds or obviously uh, via issuing new shares in the equity market. You know, nobody wants to uh, issue shares uh, on the stock market uh, when the you know, major averages are trading uh, near 10-year lows or 12-year lows at one point uh, just simply doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Again, the cost of capital was very, very high. Uh, this year we've seen two things, obviously. First, we saw uh, in January and February the beginnings of normalization uh, in global credit markets. and What that meant was that um, banks started to become a little bit more comfortable lending to one another. The interbank len uh, lending market started to free up. Then we started to see a lot larger bond issues. Uh, the first companies to start issuing new bonds were really your investment grade rated companies, mainly your non-financial investment grade rated companies. And the interest rates they were paying were considerably higher than they would have been you know, the year earlier, uh, but certainly a lot lower than they were in the, in the autumn of uh, 2008. Uh, as we move through the year, we saw a lot more of this. Uh, and over the last three or four months, we've seen both investment grade issuers as well as junk bond issuers or high yield credits these would be your riskier, lower credit quality companies. Uh, they've also been out uh, with, uh, with new bond issues, also at very reasonable interest rates. In many cases, no more than they would have paid, uh, say, a year ago. In some cases, actually a little bit less in terms of an interest rate on that debt. Uh, what that means is they can start raising capital again. Another big uh, advantage is that most MLPs have risen a lot this year in terms of share price, and that meant they can also come out with new equity issues. And so what we're really seeing is a total repricing of this market. Uh, last autumn, a year ago, in the wake of the Lehman Brothers collapse, uh, which we're just past the anniversary of, uh, we saw the credit markets freeze up and investors were really concerned that these companies would never be able to grow again uh, because they'd never be able to finance another acquisition and they would never be able to build a new pipeline. We're now seeing these companies go out and raise capital and do exactly that, build new pipelines. And more importantly, we've seen a restart of the acquisition engine as well. Uh, particularly in MLPs or partnerships involved in the upstream energy business. That would be companies actually producing uh, primarily oil or natural gas. Um, so we've really seen a, a total restart to that growth engine for MLPs. And as such, we've started to see an uprating in the amount of growth we're expected to see in their distributions over time. Um, distributions is, is just MLP parlance for uh, di uh, dividends. Uh, so we're really seeing a lot of these companies that were expected not to grow their dividends over the coming year actually look likely to do so. Uh, just a couple of quick names to mention there. On the uh, pipeline front, uh, one of our favorites has been a company called Regency Energy Partners. The symbol is RGNC. 
Uh, this company builds uh, pipelines uh, from, uh, the, their, their biggest project is building a pipeline in the Haynesville uh, Shale area, which is a very prolific gas producing area, Louisiana. About 85% of the cash flow from that pipeline is already locked up. Uh, earlier this year, uh, they turned the deal into a joint venture uh, with uh, Alinda Partners as well as an, a unit of General Electric. Uh, but very recently, they were able, able to actually raise uh, capital and increase their stake in the pipeline, uh, which should generate growth in, in cash flow for them. Another longtime favorite in both personal finance uh, as well as in MLP profits is Lin Energy, symbol L-I-N-E. Uh, this company recently made a $118 million acquisition of new oil producing properties in the Permian Basin area, uh, which is in Texas and New Mexico. Um, this is a very uh, prolific, primarily oil producing area. Uh, it's been in production for many, many decades. Uh, and they were able to buy this, uh, these properties at a significant discount to what they would have paid uh, at the height of last year's um, uh, oil, oil acquisition boom, which would have been in the spring of 2008. Uh, and so they're really picking up these oil producing properties at a discount. It's going to be almost immediately accretive to their cash flow. And the company recently announced they're looking to make another half billion dollars uh, in acquisitions over the coming months. Again, because they've been able to go out, issue new bonds, take on new lines of credit to fund that expansion, which should be immediately accretive uh, to distributions uh, and, ca and cash flows and, and for, of course, the dividend growth for, for you, the unit holder or shareholder.